Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Alex, for the introduction and for, thank you for having us. Um, I'm Adelina Tefelman, and together with uh, Monica Sirbu, we are going to talk today about uh, growing your career in tech through mentorship. Some uh, words about uh, myself. Um, I've uh, studied computer science and uh, started my career in tech uh, working for uh, IBM projects. Later on, I've uh, moved to Spiron, a company building software and hardware for testing uh, in telecommunication and automotive area. And um, as you can imagine, I had my shares of struggles as a young professional and as one of uh, the few women or sometimes only also as the only woman uh, in the development and customer engineering departments. But I also had uh, my uh, uh, champions, colleagues and friends uh, who would have a sixth sense um, and would check uh, how was, uh, I was doing in times when I was too scared to admit that the task in front of me was feeling like a big, scary monster, and I had no idea how to approach it. During my career, I've noticed that no matter how junior or uh, senior you are, it's uh, very important having someone um, to give you advice and uh, support you when you need the most. So this is why, uh, together with uh, Monica, we've created Tupu, uh, a platform to give uh, also others the opportunity for mentorship. Hi everyone, I'm Monica and I have kind of a similar career path as Madalena. So I also studied computer science and at the beginning of my career, I was working for a startup here in Berlin that was acquired twice and at the end was acquired by Oracle. And this uh, was a moment when I decided to start my own company where we created a packet bit um, and packet bit was the first one of the first monitoring solution uh, that was looking at the network traffic at that time. And after two years, this was acquired by Elastic. So I continue my journey uh, at Elastic uh, and creating the bits, um, so-called bits. Um, and uh, I stayed uh, Elastic for five years. And, and basically, uh, when the pandemic started, we wanted to do something good for the society. And we created Tupu, uh, this uh, mentorship platform um, that helps uh, women, people of color, and other underrepresented groups in tech and offers them free mentorship. And basically, we're going to talk more about this in our journey uh, and what we've learned uh, about um, uh, from Tupu. And basically, Tupu kind of, uh, while we are building the platform for Tupu, we realized that there isn't really a good database uh, services out there that is easy to use, easy to get started. Uh, and I decided to start the company, it's called SATA, and we are building a database service that basically uh, you get the usability of Airtable and you put it on a traditional database that you don't have to be a developer in order to be able to use and manage uh, a database in production. Um, so let's see a bit what we have in common. So we are both women in tech. Um, and unfortunately, uh, currently there are 20% women in tech uh, in different roles. Um, and uh, basically what worries me the most is that statistics say that 56% of those um, starting tech, they leave by mid-level. So they don't even reach a senior, uh, senior level in the company. And basically, this is what motivated us to start Tupu. Uh, and basically, this is a percentage that we have as a goal to improve. Um, and in order to, uh, to, yeah, and as you can see, um, we were very fortunate. And you can read more about Tupu on TechCrunch. There was an article. Um, uh, published at the beginning of the year. And basically we have currently a platform um, that is uh, more or less um, uh, automated, uh, but we have big goals to build a, a fully automated platform in order to be able to, um, to help as many people as possible and as well as uh, tech companies out there to support and uh, increase their diversity in their company. Um, but let's see first, uh, like, um, you know, we know that our goal is to improve this uh, 50, uh, 56% of women living tech. 
But in order to kind of understand how to approach a problem, first let's see what is a problem and how we can solve it. And in order to figure this out, let's try to put ourselves in the shoes of a woman in tech for a few minutes. Um, so the first is that, you know, in a, in a male dominated industry like, like tech is, you know, you need to also discuss first about the male's perspective. And I see, I found this uh, tweet um, and I think it's very representative. So I'm going to read this. So there's a guy at conference and said, do you have kids? And yes. Oh, wow. So your husband is taking care of them. And, you know, she's answering, yes, he's their dad. So there is always the assumption that women need to stay with the kids. And um, this is something that we are trying to solve as well. Um, a few years ago, there was this uh, hashtag on Twitter, I look like an engineer. And it basically, there were lots of um, women in tech that posted, you know, like this one, an image like this one, where they can share, where they share what is are their responsibilities in their day-to-day -day life. And with this hashtag, I look like an engineer. And here also I put the, a tweet uh, that basically summarized a bit uh, the struggles that uh, kind of motivated everyone to share their, um, you know, to share their concerns. So basically, uh, oh, so you are a designer, uh, right now, I'm not a designer, I'm a developer. Oh, what really? You don't look like an engineer. Oh, what does that mean? Um, I, I guess you are too cute to be an engineer, right? So basically, um, that's kind of uh, the perception of the world, how an engineer should look like. Uh, and the statistics say that women feel like they have to work harder um, than their co-workers in order to prove their worth. And this is something I've seen myself. So in the last many years, I was fortunate to go to women tech conferences, but not only where I had the pleasure to speak with many. Uh, and of course, it's like naturally happens that you share your um, struggles as a woman in tech. And it's something that I've seen over and over. There is a common trend, if you want, that you you you. you uh, finish university, you start your career as a software engineer, and after a few years, you realize that you are not, you are still a software engineer and you are not promoted to a senior software engineer as you would expect it. And then you start working harder and harder with the, with the idea and the hope that you'll be promoted until you end up, you know, going to depression and things like this. And then, you know, in my opinion, this is something, this is something that we can, we can do as a, as a society to avoid this happening. Um, and, you know, statistics say that gender bias is a barrier of getting a promotion. And 49% of women in tech says that this is a problem. You know, it's compared to just 8% of men in tech considering this. Um, and um, also there is a representation in that leadership position. So this is not very statistic say uh, that, you know, 3.9% of companies have a woman as their current CEO, 14% of companies have had a woman CEO, and 8.5% of company had at least half woman founders. Um, and um, let's see what are the biggest barriers uh, to women in tech to be promoted. And you can see here, 66%, they think that there is no clear path forward. 41%, there is no mentor. 39% uh, limited budget. 49% uh, gender bias. Um, and 29% lack of trust in my ability. In my opinion, I think the first ones you can easily, you know, solve, you know, um, by improving uh, the culture in the company, uh, by uh, offering more support uh, and mentorship uh, to uh, increase um, and support, first of all, support women in tech um, and also uh, help them grow in their career. 
So let's see what women think uh, that tech companies should do in order to support them. And this is not really something that surprises you. So first is offer equal maternity and paternity leave. 55% of women want this. Uh, conduct unconscious bias training. 57% uh, 55, 57% of women want this. And basically, uh, this is very important. And I think, in my opinion, all the managers should go for these trainings and even more than that. It's lovely to see that in, in the last years, these were taken serious by uh, most of the companies. Maybe not most of the companies. I think we can still have this improved, but more and more companies are taking this serious. But I think we can improve even more in that direction. Offer flexibility, offer flexible scheduling and location. You know, you don't have to be uh, um, uh, in, in the situation where you can choose either your career or your personal life. Uh, you need to learn to uh, have a work-life balance. Uh, and this is something that the tech companies should have a big uh, impact and, and big support for their employees. Uh, and then provide mentorship on opportunities. And it's incredible, 72% of women want this. Um, and then promote more women in leadership, 79% uh, of women want this. Um, and this is something that, in my opinion, depends on the culture of the company. And also, I think mentorship has also an important role in, uh, in growing women in their career, and not only women, everyone in their career, in order to be able to you know, reach the levels of executive levels or you know, higher levels in an in your organization. Um, so basically, as you see, uh, it, there is a trend that you should go for uh, a mentorship. And uh, basically, you can, and many companies, especially the, tech, the biggest tech companies, they build a mentorship platform internally um, in order to support uh, their employees. But I think in my opinion, this is a bit tricky in the sense that, uh, you know, sometimes you as a person, when you have a problem with your manager, this is a bit different, difficult to go to someone internally in the company to discuss this problem uh, in order to be able to get an objective um, support and objective advice. Uh, from someone that is in the same company. Um, so, but what happens with other people that are not supported by their tech organization? So the advice, the common advice is that you should go and search for a mentor yourself in your network. But imagine most of the time you need a mentor after you finish university. And I mean, in my opinion, you don't really have a network at this point. So people end up with, you know, asking on Twitter and other social media, you know, desperate for a mentor, right? And, and this is something that I think we can, we can improve, right? So like I said, there are all these mentorship programs uh, that tech companies um, uh, are, or like, at least the biggest ones they have um, in their organization, or if not, they, they are external mentorship programs that they can use. Uh, but the problem with this, I see that you have to pay per employee, uh, you have to pay per hour, which is very expensive. And because of that, you as a tech company, you decide to enroll only the most promising employees that you feel like they can grow in your career. Uh, which, in my opinion, those people probably they don't really need a mentorship program. And also they have the requirement that you have to meet face to face. So they are based in a location. Um, and, um, and in most of the cases, the most problematic part is that your manager is involved. So your manager, your direct manager decides on the skills uh, that you need to improve through mentorship, which, in my opinion, this is not a good idea. Um, 
So basically, this is what we are trying to solve with Tupu with, by offering free mentorship uh, to everyone. Uh, with um, we can do this uh, with our amazing volunteers. Um, that everyone can be a volunteer. Uh, you don't have to have uh, an amazing like everyone can be an, a, a, a mentor. Uh, and usually it's better to have a mentor that has been through your situation a few years ago um, that has fresh memories about how they were able to handle a certain situation. And mentors usually are super proud that they are doing this um, and they are helping uh, other people uh, that are maybe not so fortunate to be able to go over um, a bad situation in the organization to be able to uh, admit that their organization have a, a toxic environment and instead of you know going into depression or other things they decide to leave the company because you also need to have the courage to leave the company so people are uh, our mentors are so proud that they also put in their linkedin profile um, this one of the things that I think it's very beneficial to the mentorship program that we are offering is that this is not tied to a location. So you have the big advantage to meet with someone from a different continent. And why I think this is valuable is that, for example, if I'm here in Europe and I would like to know how things are done um, at another company for another continent, especially US, um, so I can learn and improve and grow. Um, and basically, this is something that all, not only you as a person has uh, to benefit, but also the company, because it's a way for them to grow in their career and do amazing, um, build amazing uh, teams and amazing products for their organization. And basically, we want to offer um, as many um, depart like as many experience uh, to kind of have mentors with uh, lots of experience. If you are an engineer, if you are in marketing and sales and so on, and discussions are usually something like you are a new parent and you want to get um, uh, tips from someone that already have been through this and knows how to. Uh, found the balance work between work-life balance, uh, or you, you are a software engineer and you want to become a manager, uh, or uh, you want to improve your coding skills. No matter what you want to discuss, um, uh, we, our goal is to help you and find the right mentor for you. And now let's uh, have a look what we've learned at Tupu about being a mentor, a mentee, and what it uh, takes to make a mentorship successful. So, uh, first, uh, mentorship, let's uh, have a few words about mentorship. Uh, it's nothing new to humanity. So having a mentor, a guru, um, a teacher is something uh, known from ancient times. As actually, um, 101 was the only way of transmitting information from person to person or from uh, generation to generation. And there were some uh, mentorships uh, uh, which remained in history. Um, uh, some of the most uh, uh, renumated uh, uh, being uh, Socrates, uh, mentoring uh, Plato, Plato mentoring uh, Aristotle, and Aristotle uh, mentoring uh, Alexander the Great, uh, who then went and conquered uh, half of the known world at that time. Uh, speaking about modern mentorship, um, some uh, famous relations uh, come fast in our mind, like uh, Maya Angelou mentoring uh, Oprah Winfrey, Father Michael mentoring uh, Mother Teresa, for the fashionistas, uh, the well-known uh, Christian Dior mentoring uh, the young Yves Saint Laurent, and of course, uh, famous mentorships in uh, tech, Warren Buffett mentoring uh, Bill Gates or Steve Jobs uh, mentoring uh, Mark uh, Zuckerberg. And nowadays with schools, universities, uh, boot camps, uh, 
online courses. Uh, one would think that one-on-one -on -one mentorship uh, is the last thing people uh, need, but uh, we think that one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship is the key to success because uh, it's the best way of uh, navigating this overwhelming uh, amount of uh, possibilities. Uh, and the mentor uh, can provide you a very uh, good uh, um, program or help uh, to, um, uh, to put yourself uh, on this path to success. Uh, um, so we've just uh, seen that from ancient times to modern times, a mentorship is very beneficial for a mentee. But uh, since the mentor has all the information and the experience, uh, is mentorship a one-way street? Not at all. Uh, because mentor and mentee are shaping each other and are sharpening their skills. We all have busy lives, we work, we uh, go to school, uh, have families, have pets to take care, we have friends and hobbies, and um, we also have to keep up with uh, uh, learning new things uh, at work or um, uh, for uh, our personal life. So why taking the time uh, and making the effort to mentoring someone? Well, uh, this man, uh, moment in time, you are who you are uh, due to your hard work, but also due to the successful work of your parents, your teachers, colleagues, um, and the managers who sustained you and mentored you actively or without knowing. So wanting to, helping, uh, to help someone else is uh, natural. You also get the chance to practice how to deliver uh, best information in bits and bytes, uh, not whoever or well and mentee. And a mentor gets the chance to uh, lead the mentee to become more skillful, more independent in searching uh, information, solving issues, access their network uh, or the community when needing help. Because new times generate uh, new challenges, but also uh, give the possibility to solve old challenges in new ways. So in this uh, process, the mentor has the chance to update their knowledge and stay in touch uh, with what's new in the field. But stay tuned that uh, there is more uh, for being a mentor. So be the, uh, being at the beginning uh, of a career or uh, reaching a new phase is coming with doubts, but also with a lot of curiosity and enthusiasm. So the mentor has the unique opportunity to charge this wonderful enthusiasm and see the domain again with curious eyes. Also, a mentor has the opportunity to hear firsthand the challenges and struggles the mentee has. Some of these challenges might be unconscious bias to which otherwise you wouldn't pay attention. And let's not forget that if you have projects at work or outside work, having a mentee who helps you is a wonderful win-win situation. Last but not least, let's remember that nature created us so human as social beings and um, uh, help us uh, uh, this in order to survive. So as a bonus to help someone, we uh, get a good dose of uh, dopamine. So how cool is that? Uh, you get uh, to help someone uh, to learn the new things and uh, also uh, help with uh, uh, your own projects. So you've agreed to be a mentor. Now what? What is expected from you? And uh, let's have a look. Uh, together with your mentee, break the goals in very atomic uh, tasks, which can be done from session to session because small things uh, lead to big things and small things are doable. Practice shows that it is very efficient to con uh, concentrate on doing small things. Having a big task uh, to work on uh, could overwhelm a mentee. Also, for a mentor, be very patient, very, very patient. If there are parents and big brothers or sisters among you, you may remember uh, how much patience you have to have with a small child till uh, the child learns uh, to do the things alone. Well, with a uh, mentee, is the same. Some tasks might be done uh, immediately and some uh, you might uh, repeat over and over again till the mentee is understanding uh, the importance of doing a task. Also, uh, give encouragement, uh, because if uh, the mentee is at the beginning, uh, chances are that uh, he or she has doubts uh, about the knowledge or skills 
um, but uh, the power to complete a task and uh, to reach a goal. So using a high five or well done, but also pointing out uh, what were uh, the stages of accomplishing this task uh, is uh, very important because the self-confidence is built on proofs. So yesterday your mentee has solved an easy task, today solving a middle one, and little by little with your help uh, will uh, develop uh, the confidence to try also difficult tasks and uh, after a while also uh, do everything alone. Feedback is very important for a mentee uh, to know how good they perform and what is the next step uh, they have to take. Uh, but remember to give uh, constructive uh, feedback. And uh, here uh, I would like to address um, uh, all the mentors, mentees, and all uh, members of feedback uh, has to be uh, uh, something a uh, mentee uh, wants to build upon. Uh, feedback shouldn't be uh, something a person should feel ashamed and uh, to feel that uh, they need to attack back. There should be this moment of, aha, uh -huh, that's a good point. I have to consider it for next time. Does it make sense? It's a perfect way of uh, having a feedback. This could be. But if everyone wants a good feedback, a constructive feedback, Let's all try uh, to give such a feedback. Also, as a mentor, um, work with your mentee uh, to, to give you feedback. Because um, it's working for your mentee and what's not. So what else uh, could you do to help your mentee? Whenever possible, consider integrating your mentee in your projects. If it's an article, or talk, a code review, or any other project that your mentee could uh, help you and also benefit um, to um, learn something. Um, one very important thing uh, to your mentee is the appraisal. So after finishing a task, accomplishing a goal, no matter if uh, big or small, just take a, small, uh, a bit of time and uh, uh, appraise that and also go uh, through the steps that uh, this task was uh, done. One last uh, thing for a mentor should uh, be to pay attention uh, for burnout, because burnout is not only for workplace. A mentor uh, who invests a lot of time in, and energy um, to, uh, so that uh, the mentee is uh, learning uh, can also uh, easily uh, burn out. So taking it easy and concentrating on small and doable things is the key to success for both mentor and mentees. Now that we know what is needed from a mentor, let's see um, who is uh, qualifying uh, to be a mentor. So the obvious would be someone with uh, experience in the domain, someone having, but it shouldn't be someone uh, necessarily who is uh, there for 20, 10, or even uh, five years. As Monica was uh, mentioning, for someone uh, who is uh, getting uh, new, uh, in the area, uh, having a mentor uh, who is having one or two years of experience uh, is uh, also very beneficial uh, because not long ago, uh, this uh, uh, mentor uh, had the same challenges as the mentee and uh, can uh, better put uh, himself or, or herself in the shoes of the mentee and uh, help uh, this person. And now let's move to the other side of the mentorship and see uh, who can uh, be a mentee. So everyone can be a mentee, a beginner or, or advanced. Everyone can benefit from guidance from uh, someone more experienced in the area. He's she trying to build uh, new skills. Uh, someone can be a mentee to learn new uh, uh, skills and also uh, can uh, be a mentor to help someone uh, else achieve uh, their goals. So congratulations, someone agreed to be your mentor and uh, guided you to achieve your goals. What is your role in this relation? What is expected from you? Now, first, acknowledge that your mentor is investing a precious resources from their life, the time. So time to prepare and time to meet with you. So be considerate of your mentor's uh, time and make the mentorship as smooth as possible for your mentor. 
Imagine yourself as the driver of the mentorship. You are the one defining where you want to go and have to do the work uh, to reach your destination. Your mentor is the driving assistant who points out the different paths you could take and uh, the work you should do to reach your destination. So play a very active role in uh, your mentorship by setting uh, the sessions. If you have to cancel one, just do it uh, uh, as soon as you know that. Uh, setting the agenda for the next session, inform your uh, mentor what you want to talk next so that your mentor has the time to prepare, but yourself also start to work uh, towards this and uh, put yourself in this uh, mindset. One constant uh, that you will have in your career is feedback. So getting feedback from your peers, your manager, community members. So get comfortable to receive feedback and also search for feedback when wanting uh, to improve your skills. Only by knowing where you are and uh, what, you, uh, what, uh, what you have to do, you can progress. But different people uh, can give uh, different uh, feedback. So some might choose uh, well their words and some might just rush and uh, deliver uh, what uh, you have to improve there without uh, being so considerate. So what to do when you have the feeling that uh, you receive the harsh feedback? First, don't close your eyes. Don't put your uh, hands to your ears. Just take the content, not the, uh, the package. See if there is something valuable for you in this feedback. Give the person the credit that the intention was good, but the words were not well chosen. What if the person, mentor, colleague, manager, member of your community is continuing giving you feedback in this manner? The best way would be to approach that person and mention that his her, uh, feedback uh, is sounding uh, very harsh to you. But if you are uh, the beginning of your career or in your company, the chances are that you wouldn't uh, like to do this yourself. So maybe a good uh, approach is uh, get the help of a colleague um, or members of your community. Um, you might even have a special committee in your company or uh, community uh, who can mitigate uh, such a case. Get comfortable also to give feedback. You also, as a mentee, uh, should uh, give uh, the feedback uh, to your mentor. And this might be very difficult at the beginning because uh, saying uh, to someone with uh, more experience uh, that uh, something is not working for you is not easy, but it's uh, the only way uh, to, um, uh, to help uh, the mentor uh, um, search for a new way, something that is working for you. I mean, you have to, uh, to see that the mentorship is tailored, uh, bait for you. So you have to say the uh, tailored uh, when something is uh, uh, too large or something uh, is not uh, well for you, is not feeling uh, good. The next point would be to do the work. And this is not something that we at Tupu are saying, but something what the bestseller uh, author is saying. There is no other way of making progress than doing the work. To make it easy for you to stay motivated and make consistent progress, do every day a little or a little uh, bit more towards the goal you are uh, currently working on. Last point on the list, but tremendous important, is to give back to your community. With your help, um, with your mentor's help, uh, you acquire faster uh, new knowledge and skills. And the better way to uh, put it in practice is to give uh, back to your community in form of projects, articles, talks, because what was uh, a revelation uh, to you might also be a revelation for someone else. What experienced uh, community members might also um, add uh, uh, their ideas to this project. And so more and more members are involved and can uh, benefit from. So always remember that your contribution, even small, is a butterfly effect, which can lead uh, to big effects to you and to your community. Now let's see uh, how to uh, to start a mentorship and set it uh, and set it up for success. Um, if uh, the mentor and uh, mentee um, are uh, don't know each other. Um, they should take the first uh, one or two sessions and get to know a little bit each other about uh, um, know each other, uh, talk a little bit about their life, their career. I mean, 
um, the, if the mentor and mentees are from different um, um, cultures, also here might be a thing that not everyone is so comfortable uh, speaking so much about their family. So the best way is just um, to pay attention uh, to your mentorship partner and also respect this. And if uh, a point come up, uh, what you don't like to discuss, just uh, be gentle and um, uh, remember uh, this. So also share a little bit about your hobbies. The idea is that to make uh, a starting point where uh, maybe every uh, session you have a small warm up before uh, starting uh, with uh, what uh, the mentee wants uh, to learn or what, uh, what he or she wants to show. Uh, also decide how long the mentorship uh, should be. In our experience, uh, should be uh, six months is a good time. Um, also, how often you would like to meet. Um, of course, that depends uh, on uh, um, it depends on the mentor's time. Um, but um, if uh, the the sessions are to close, the mentor the mentee doesn't have uh, the time. Uh, to do the work, and if it's uh, uh, after a long time, uh, there is to space and does, and uh, is learning uh, to uh, to slow. Uh, so uh, decide also which are uh, the goals and which are the most important that you would like uh, to work, because due to the time or maybe uh, vacation sickness and so on could be that you don't uh, achieve all the goals. But uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the mentorship is not uh, successful. So last but uh, not least, um, when the time is ending, because uh, the six months uh, are ending or one of the mentorship partners doesn't have a time anymore or the mentee uh, already reached the goals, just make a summary uh, together of what uh, you have achieved um, um, what was working and what uh, not, because both mentor and mentees um, are, are having a lot to learn from this. So, and ending uh, the mentorship doesn't have to be an end. Stay in touch, if possible, and consider the collaboration for other projects. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>